Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and uh, it's been a while since I've uh, actually filmed a video in front of my computer in my office because the all my office windows were replaced. They were the old old ones. The house is um, quite old. It was built in 1911, and there was an extension put on the back probably in the 50s, and so the windows were from then. And, uh, you know, it was pretty cold in the office. And uh, anyway, you know, very energy inefficient. And so we got new windows and that you can actually open open them. So some of them anyway. So um, as a result, my computer and the whole office was a total mess. Um, and I'll just kind of kind of show you here. So bookshelves and there's my great uh, climate science basic sign and uh just total total mess everything was kind of just thrown in in corners to get them away from the windows etc you know and there's my desk which is sort of sitting halfway in the middle of the room right now and uh plants need a lot of work you know they didn't get watered too much in the last uh month month and a half so um anyway i'm back in I I, pull, I I created a space, you know, so there's my computer with the desk and all the mess and my tripod and the, uh, so I'm getting the office back to shape. You'll probably notice in these videos that it gets better and better over time. So what I'm going to talk about in this video is, you know, you'll notice that I've been posting videos from the COP27 in Sharm El Sheikh, and also um, videos from COP15 in Montreal, which I attended. Um, but most of the recorded sessions um, are actually, I gotta adjust my camera a little bit, get it, get it right here. It's, uh, mm. Okay, that's pretty good, actually. So, most of the sessions in um, in Sharm El Sheikh, Egypt, and also in COP15 that I did, um, that were recorded, were not recorded by me, but they were recorded by Heidi and Charles under <coughs> the uh, auspices of Climate Emergency Forum. I also had um, video calls with uh, Meta Spencer in, in Toronto, um, who, which is part of Project to Save the World. And there's the odd one that I've done with uh, facingfuture.org. And also there's, um, there's another group, um, which I've been involved with with videos, not so much recently. So I want to basically point out all of these different um, platforms on which I've done interviews with people and had um, panel discussions on climate change, all different aspects of climate change. So um, anyway, it's nice to be back in business in my office. I just I, I had to just you know basically start. I've been avoiding, you know, cleaning up this room. I still have to do the ceiling, you know, put in a suspended ceiling. And so there's still work and I do it all myself. So, so anyway, um, so, um, you know, beginning of the new year, I did my walking video talking about the broken jet stream and how it was the cause of recent flash freezing and then a massive thawing and, you know, huge amounts of snow, various places and, you know, zipping back and forth in this weather whiplashing kind of kind of thing. So, so <coughs> make sure you follow follow me at paulbeckwith.net. Please consider donating um, on my PayPal to support my research and videos, which I'll be putting out at a decent clip. I still have some videos from COP15 and COP27 that I want to post, but I'll intersperse those with um, newly recorded videos on very cutting edge topics, you know, looking at the science and translating it into everyday language so that you can understand the complex climate climate system, abrupt climate system change 
science so that you can um, take actions accordingly uh, based on, on what you what you learn. Um, this is another av avenue to uh, support my work, uh, um, Patreon. Um, so I've got 15 patrons, not too many people use, are using Patreon. People are preferring the, uh, the PayPal uh, link on my website. Um, and of course my YouTube channel. So I've been posting the, um, you know, videos from the conferences, um, but not, not the ones um, where I've been in panels. Those are being done by, like I said, the Climate Emergency Forum. <coughs> so let's just show you my, my Facebook page. You know, make sure you friend me on Facebook and I post updates there. This is another, this is one of the groups, Project Save the World, or where Meta Spencer in Toronto, she's a 94 year old woman and she's just full of energy and she's doing all kinds of videos on, on, um, with various scientists, you know, and I'm in quite a, quite a few of them. Um, but I'll talk about her, her website a bit more. So anyway, this is my Facebook, um, site and on Twitter, of course, just at Paul H Beckwith, you know, I've been using Twitter an awful lot. Um, people are asking me, have you switched yet? I mean, I've got to set up, you know, the alternate alternates to Twitter. I use Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, um, some Instagram, um, and, um, but you know, the other ones, um, like telegraph, telegraph and Mastodon, et cetera, et cetera. I'll be joining those. Um, if there's other ones that I need to join, please write in the comments to this video, the name. So this is my Twitter feed and I've retweeted some climate emergency forum, um, posts. So let's talk about climate emergency forum. So this group was basically consists of, um, basically Charles Gregoire and Heidi Brault, um, they wanted to promote the work that I do and the work that Peter Carter does and also the work that Regina Valdez does. So the three of us are on the program and Charles and Heidi are behind the scenes and they do, do all the work, all the video editing, all the planning, etc. And <coughs> of course, those are the people that uh, the colleagues that I went to both uh, COP27 in, in uh, Egypt and also COP15 in Montreal went, went with, the, with them. We we're all based in Ottawa. Um, so this is a climateemergencyforum.org website. So the mission is to increase public awareness and knowledge pertaining to abrupt climate change, the disruption of climate systems and the loss of biodiversity and biomass, as well as emergency solutions. So, there's some blogs, but mostly it's the videos, the videos, and there's loads of videos. Okay. So let's talk about the videos. So please subscribe to this channel so that when there's new videos posted, um, you can see them and also follow on Facebook and Twitter. And, uh, yeah, I'll be retweeting more. I've been, you know, you, you kind of, after you, you kind of, fall in these patterns and I got into the patterns of just, you know, posting my own videos and retweeting them, you know, tweeting them, Facebooking them, LinkedIn, all these different media platforms. And, uh, you know, sometimes I've forgotten to retweet and, and do things with the climate emergency forum and facing future, but I'll try to be a bit better this year. <laughs> That's one of my new year's resolutions. So let's look at the, uh, Twitter, um, this is a Twitter page for Climate Emergency Forum. Um, and you can see the videos. So these videos are coming out at a fast clip. It takes time to process them. So um, this is a video um, that I had, I interviewed Catherine Hayhoe um, at COP15 in Montreal. Um, we talked about biodiversity, you know, uh, b basically the conference, what was being achieved, what 3030, 30% of land protected by 2030, you know, those sort of goals. Um, this was the previous, the, 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 the previous date of that um, with Elizabeth May, um, the member of parliament 
of the Green Party, leader of the Green Party, co-leader of the Green Party of Canada. We talked about both the COP15 and COP27, um, as I did with uh, Catherine as well. And then this was a conversation with Alex Carlin about ocean pasture restoration. Um, he's a foreign correspondent on environment for the Center for Media and Democracy. So this was in, in Sharm El Sheikh. And then there was a, um, an interview with Peter Fayakowski um, on the plan for climate restoration. Um, this was a uh, special video with, uh, with a bunch of um, scientists from the uh, Climate um, Repair Center from Cambridge University. Um, and then a COP27 recap with Dan Galpern, who's the lawyer for, um, <coughs> he's, he's the lawyer for James Hansen. Um, when James Hansen and the kids were suing the U.S. government, etc., and uh, you know they, he, he does an awful lot of work on on trying you know environmental lawsuits. Um, this is a another special uh, show with Dan and Don Viviani on the legal battle to save the world, and uh, the orderly transition, seeking a just and orderly transition, with Sir David King was in here, was, was on this one, uh, special guest, this was a COP27, and then adaptation and mitigation um, with a special guest John Liu and Dr. Jem Bendel um, in Sharm El Sheikh, uh, climate reparations, this was a Sharm El Sheikh session with Dr. Jeffrey Sachs and Dr. Lisa Dale. So you can see there's there's loads of them. This is a mere update, November 20, 2022, with Dr. Yi Tao talking about the Muir project and pro and progress since the first video we published the previous year. Uh, Eco grief. Um, so anyway, there's loads of stuff. This is Charles and Heidi and myself with the crazy hat and uh, Regina Valdez. You know, our, our the, the climate emergency forum people. Um, at COP27 in, in Egypt. Okay, so there's lots of sessions. So let's just, uh, the actual YouTube channel is here with all of the sessions and they're all getting, they're, they're, a lot of them are coming out now because it takes time to do the editing and processing. Charles does an amazing, and Heidi do an amazing job with putting together, you know, editing and putting together all these videos. Um, as you know, my videos are much more uh, you know, rough around the edges, if you like. So, um, so, so this is some examples. Um, you know, why is it going here? Okay. Uh, okay, here we go. So this is the uh, interview with Catherine Hayhoe. And, you know, the comments are you know, very inform informative, you know, well worth reading if you're interested in, you know, to find out what particular videos you want to watch. So she's a Canadian atmospheric scientist. She's the chief scientist for the Nature Conservance Conservancy and a distinguished professor in the political science department of Texas Tech University. Political science, I thought it was climate science. But anyway, uh, <coughs> so she was in, 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 uh, COP15, where I did the interview of her. She was also <coughs> in, excuse me, in Sharm El Sheikh. Okay, so this video was recorded on December 16th at the Conference on Biodiversity, published January 14th. So we discussed a lot of sort of human type things like climate anxiety and strategies to deal with it. You know, what gives Catherine cause for hope in the climate fight, how we hold the future in our hands. And if we allow ourselves to be overwhelmed on a regular basis, then we don't do anything about the climate and biodiversity situation. And then the worst case scenario will happen. But if we fight with everything we have for that small chance for a better future, that fight is what will give us a chance. So, you know, this is the type of thing where you do the right things, you take action against climate change, without any expectation of 
a result in the near term or, or ever, in fact. Um, so she gave uh, some examples of the work uh, done by the Nature Conservancy. So there were developments in the measurement of biodiversity through DNA samples collected from water and on land. Um, and, uh, you know, um, it's, uh, so, you know, the urgency of the situation, how we need to improve scientific communication, um, how we need to do, get, get scientific information, you know, in poorer countries and pertaining to poorer countries who lack the financial means to do the research themselves, uh, the need to use information from trusted sources, but also who, who, you know, telling compelling stories that connect our heads to our heart, hearts to our hands, how all, all of us have stories to tell about how climate change is affecting us if we open our eyes to it, okay? And so there's very good descriptions in, in, in these messages. So this one here, I don't know why it keeps, uh, why it's shifted. Here we go. This is uh, Elizabeth May. Uh, so, uh, you know, this interview, this video re was recorded on December 15, 2022, published on January 12th. So she's, uh, you know, M an MP in Canada, co-leader of the Green Party of Canada, longtime environmental activist. So we talked about the bo both the conference on biodiversity, COP15 in Montreal, and also the conference, the COP27 in Egypt. So, you know, we basically, she talked a little bit about um, some of the framework convention on climate change was first how it was first signed in Rio in 92 you know we've emitted more greenhouse gases from that time of the then then from the time that from the time of the beginning of the so more since the first climate conference emissions than from the industrial revolution start up to uh, 1992 basically you know, I talked about how the negotiations are like a basketball game. One plays for two hours and the game is often decided in the last minute. You know, that's what these climate conferences basically do. So we talked about the the target of 30% land protection, ocean protection. So the area 30% protected by 2030, you know, and the complexities of it. Like the devil's always in, in the details. The importance of the indigenous peoples when one considers that 30% of the land base has to have no people on it. Um, does it have no people on it or is it just people that are living lightly on the land? Um, you know, uh, so basically, you know, we talked all about the conferences, etc. And then this one here, Ocean Pasture Restoration with Alex Carlin. Um, so Alex is the foreign co correspondent on the environment for the Center for Media and Democracy. And he's always walking around these cops with the guitar. You don't see him without his guitar and he just starts playing it. Uh, and he's got an encyclopedic knowledge on songs, knows every Beatles song, many other songs. So he just picks it up and starts uh, going at it and, and, and composing music as he goes so so we talked about cop 27 so this was a this video was recorded on november 10th published on january 9th so about a, a lag of about a, a, a month i mean that's just because of cops right we get all kinds of content filmed at the cops at conference on biodiversity and then to go through and do the editing and stuff, it's an awful lot of work. So kudos to Charles and Heidi for 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 churning through this. And they're 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 getting very. There's still <coughs> videos to come out, um, but they're they're getting there. They're getting there, and we're also filming new content as well. So you know, COP twenty. Some of the, we talked about COP twenty seven and the diverse opportunities it provides to network with the climate community. They need to focus more on drawing down the anthropogenic accumulated CO two in the atmosphere rather than the, just emphasizing emissions reduction. We talked about Russ George and John Martin. We talked about you know and the work that they've done in this area. 
in the past. Um, more details about ocean pasture restoration, which is a means of enhancing the natural power of the oceans and phytoplankton to draw down CO2 from the atmosphere. Other benefits like cooling the ocean um, through the enhancement of the natural depth oriented water circulation from zooplankton, the creation of white clouds uh, by enhancing the source of, of uh, cloud nuclei from dimethyl sulfide released from the plankton, restoration of fish populations, etc. And we talked about how a recent paper um, highlighted the aerosol sensitivity to planet warming being you know much closer to one degree Celsius as opposed to 0.5 degrees Celsius, that global dimming factor. Uh, there was another uh, session here. Uh, this is uh, when I was chatting with Peter Bayakowski. So the author, founder of the Foundation for Climate Restoration, an MIT trained physicist and entrepreneur. Um, and uh, this is a really excellent video. You've got to watch this one. So uh, basically, we chatted about Peter's recently published book called Climate Restoration, The Only Future That Will Sustain the Human Race. Um, and we talked about this um, at the COP27 in Sharm el-Sheikh, Egypt on November 11th, and it was published on January 5th. So Peter's been working on climate restoration for about six years since COP21, which was held in Paris. Um, musings about, we talked about when the, when the focus of the COP meetings will turn to the topic of climate restoration. So I asked him, you know, so when are we going to, when is like, so this COP was all about, um, uh, reparations, right? Money you know, going, that needs to go to developing countries to pay for the damages, so loss and damage mechanisms, all that. Um, so I was asked, you know, we were kind of speculating on when, the next COP, you know, what, what COP would be all about climate restoration? When would that be the topic? And, uh, you know, um, I think uh, we came to kind of a view, you know, maybe, maybe COP uh, 32 or something, <laughs> 31, 32, you know, maybe something within five years. I said, well, it's not going to be COP 50, I hope. You know, it was kind of, it's getting kind of ridiculous, these COPs when you compare the action that is actually being done by countries. You know, climate restoration is all about geomimicry and biomimicry, Cop copying natural things that are done, just giving them a little boost to make it an enormous difference. Uh, four big plans to restore the climate um, and the criteria used to evaluate these solutions. Very, very interesting. It's detailed in the book, but also in, in the video. And there's a couple more um, that I wanted to show. Um, this is, uh, yes, yeah, so, okay, so this is it also, uh, this was a session on, with Dr. Sean Fitzgerald, Brad Ack, Natalie Hilmi, and Ulaf Ibrahim. Um, so I, myself and Regina from the Climate Emergency Forum, we're, we're talking with all of these people on ocean-based carbon dioxide removal. Um, so the, so we talked about, these people are with the Center for Climate Repair at the University of Cambridge, started about two years ago with the purpose of looking on, at how to tackle climate change in an active way. Its strategy is based on the three R's of reduce, remove, refreeze. So we talked about the role of oceans for removing CO2 in the atmosphere as a key means of restoring the climate, the role of kelp, not just in coastal waters, but also considering its cultivation in the deep ocean. The need for research in terms of modeling as well as experiments to confirm predictions from modeling. The need for marine biomass restoration to regenerate the oceans, the role that whales play, very important role that whales play. Um, you know, Ocean Visions, the, the organization called Ocean Visions is introduced. It's a collaborative partnership of research and scientific institutions with practitioners and marine managers. It looks for solutions to critical problems facing the oceans. Okay, um, 
You know, we also talked about how the paradigm of climate restoration will eventually take on a more prominent role in future COP negotiations, how direct ocean capture provides a much more advantageous leverage point for carbon removal as compared to direct air capture and much, much more. And there's, I think, one more I want to talk about here. Um, and yeah, so this one here, this basically was the, so we sort of summarized COP27 in this view. So we shared our perspectives on COP27. We recorded this on December 6th after we returned home and published it on December 19th. So, you know, basically, you know, what COP's been doing, the good, the bad, and the ugly of COP. Now, I mentioned that um, I've quite frequently on this video, these videos in this project to save the world. Okay. Um, so there's all kinds of videos on here. This is Meta Spencer, 94 year, years old, full of energy, very, very concerned and gung ho. And uh, she's or she does all these videos. So, you know, is swamp gas in our future? Uh, our urban tree canopy? Um, I'm not in all of them, but I'm in a fair number of them. Okay, you, you can just see the little picture there of me and mine tailings was i in that one i don't remember i don't see my little picture um that that looks like me this guy in the top right corner here right over here top right corner that looks like 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 the usual suspect and uh here i am over here clouds and climate okay so these are these are big the groups of people you know peter wadhams is in there there's peter wadhams He's in a lot of these, um, ecology and forests. I go in them when I can, you know, They're, they come out pretty much every week. There's lots of people here, as I in that one. Concrete in Canada's future. Anyway, there's lots, iron salt. There's Peter Bayakowski. So Meta has built up quite a, quite a network of scientists. There I am, Hudson's Bay, Hudson's Bay Ice Project. Um, anyway, you get you get the picture. So this is not something else to subscribe to at to save the world. Um, and there's another set, set of videos. Um, there's a group called the World Talent Economy Forum. Um, this is their website, um, and they do quite a bit of work. You know, reports and you know they have lots of topics, lots of really interesting topics. Um, and I'm often in these videos, not so much in the last month or so, month or two, but before then I was in, you know, maybe three or four a week sometimes. So here's a nuclear fusion one, for example, and you can just, uh, you know, play it from here or go to the, you can watch it on YouTube. Um, so Sharif Uddin Ahmed Rana in um, Bangladesh um, is the, is the key instigator of this site and these videos and you should uh you know they happen generally at 11:05 a.m eastern time they're live streamed and they're also recorded and they go up on youtube so there's lots of climate change topics there and i'll start i'm going to start doing them again next week and then don't forget the group facing future dot earth okay so so this, the team attended both COP27 in Sharm and the Biodiversity Conference. So Charles Heidi and myself are members also of this organization. Um, and there were six press conferences in Montreal and the programs are here, or, you know, you can click on the links, you know, there's blogs, there's testimonial from Al Gore, you know, Facing Future TV. And there's a, there's a library, an interesting library. You can search through all of the different content. So here's the um, here's <coughs> the YouTube page. So these were um, you know recently uploaded videos. John L John Liu 
um, restoring damaged ecosystems at scale. Done tremendous amounts of on the ground work to set up these eco restoration camps. And he was also, um, so he was at the, you know, at, at the, uh, at both conferences. He was both in Montreal and also in um, Sharm El Sheikh. Um, so these are recent videos that were, that have been uploaded, but I don't think they're all there. Let's go back here and look at the link for the, okay, so these, these are the press conferences. Climate honesty, climate justice, beyond maladaptation, stopping plastics, global energy justice, and healing the earth and the human spirit, the great work in our time. So that's the sessions from uh, the COP27. And there's also the Twitter page for Facing Future, but it's not very active. So we have to change that this year and, and get up the subscriber count. So these are all very, very good groups um, that I'm involved with. And, uh, you know, when, when I post, uh, you know, so the videos that are done with all of these groups um, appear on their pages. Um, often I'm on panels. Um, in those groups and uh, they can be seen by if you follow the groups and you can see um, you know some of the other work that I'm doing up above and beyond my channel um, so anyway thank you for listening and uh, you know please uh, consider donating on PayPal to support my research and videos or you know set up a patreon account and um, I've got too many windows open I'm really glad that um, my office is finally uh, starting to take shape and uh, I have no excuse. You'll see the, the mess uh, go down and the, um, and the organization and, uh, you know, the, the health of my plants go way, way up, you know, as I do these videos, you know, every, every few days. Okay, well, thank you for listening, and uh, we'll, we'll chat soon. Bye for now.